Are you worried about heart attacks and think avoiding red meat and eating more fish is better for you? Many studies and articles seem to indicate this, but is this always the case? Our ancestors ate a significant amount of red meat, yet heart disease was rare. When it comes to fish, we're often told to eat it for cardiovascular health, but are all types beneficial? Some cardiologists argue that certain types of fish are best avoided and advise their patients to include red meat as part of a heart-healthy diet. Red meat has certainly had its fair share of bad press. However, scientists and researchers have begun to question this notion, with evidence that suggests red meat may not be associated with heart disease. For example, Dr George Mann, who was a professor of biochemistry, studied the diets of the Maasai. They're a Kenyan tribe whose diet mainly consists of red meat along with blood and milk. Dr Mann found that the Maasai ate plentiful amounts of lamb, beef and goat. He noted that on market days when the animals were killed, they would eat 4 to 10 pounds of meat per person. If conventional wisdom was true, you would expect their arteries to be blocked and their blood pressure to be sky high. However, this wasn't the case. They had about 50% lower blood pressure and body weight than their American counterparts. What's even more fascinating is that these didn't increase with age. Dr. Mann performed over 400 electrocardiograms on the Maasai and found no evidence of any heart attacks. So let's explore the truth behind red meat and fish. But before we jump in, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We've got amazing new content each week. Also stick around because later in this video, we'll show you how to receive two free gifts on us. First, let's look at why red meat might be an essential part of a healthy diet. Red meat provides a great source of certain nutrients that are hard to obtain from plant-based foods. These are vitamin B12, zinc, iron. Vitamin B12 aids in keeping red blood cells healthy and making DNA. Zinc is especially important for a strong immune system. It plays a role in cell division, cell growth, wound healing, and the breakdown of carbohydrates. It also decreases oxidative stress and levels of certain inflammatory proteins in your body, both of which are great news in the fight against heart attacks. Iron is important for the transport of oxygen in the blood. This is essential for providing energy for daily life. The heme iron in red meat is absorbed easily by the body as opposed to non-heme iron from plants. Healthy iron levels are important as low iron can cause anemia and cardiovascular problems. Further to this, red meat, such as beef, gram for gram, is more nutrient dense and more economical than many other protein foods. It contains essential nutrients, iron, vitamin B12 and zinc that we already mentioned, but it also contains riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, selenium, phosphorus, pantothenate, potassium and magnesium. These all play a vital role in keeping our body healthy. Interestingly, potassium and magnesium are critical for blood pressure regulation and heart health. Potassium helps the body get rid of excess sodium, which leads to hypertension. And magnesium aids in keeping the blood vessels relaxed so the blood can flow with ease. Furthermore, red meat and organ meats are an important source of antioxidants that aren't found in significant amounts in plant foods. Two examples are coenzyme Q10, also known as CoQ10, and retinol, which is preformed vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for many processes in your body, such as maintaining healthy vision and ensuring the normal function of your immune system and organs. However, CoQ10 is vital for heart health. This vitamin-like substance is made in each cell throughout the body. It helps create energy from the food we eat. Dr. Stephen Sinatra was one of the first cardiologists to recognize the healing power of CoQ10 for the heart. He likens it to a spark plug that creates energy from the fuel in the car. In the same way that a gasoline engine can't work without spark plugs, our body can't work without CoQ10. The heart, along with the liver, has the highest concentrations of it. Because the heart is always at work, it relies heavily on the energy generating power of this nutrient. A CoQ10 deficiency can have catastrophic effects on the heart, just like a calcium deficiency would affect your bones. 
As you can see, eating red meat can certainly support a healthy cardiovascular system. But is this always the case? Numerous studies have linked red meat consumption with heart disease and cancers. However, cardiologist Dr. Mark Houston believes red meat is not the problem, but what the red meat has in it that causes problems. He explains that if the animals are being fed corn and grains, this can lead to a lower quality of meat. This problem is multifaceted. Firstly, the grains often contain pesticides and other chemicals. These are then stored as toxins in the fat of the animal. Therefore, when a human consumes them, they're getting a concentrated amount of these toxins. Secondly, the grains are less nutritious than if a cow is eating fresh grass, thus affecting the nutrient levels in the meat. A 2006 article compared grass-fed cattle to grain-fed cattle. It found grass-fed animals had higher levels of beneficial omega-3 essential fatty acids and conjugated linoleic acid. Studies also show that cattle who've been grass-fed have higher levels of precursors for vitamin A, precursors for vitamin E, and antioxidants such as glutathione. This is important to note as antioxidants help repair damage done to cells. Having a diet rich in antioxidants is key to preventing heart disease. The third problem with meat from grain-fed animals is that they're given hormones and antibiotics. If we eat this, we are then putting hormones and antibiotics into our body. This could explain why so many people are suffering with hormonal and gut issues. When we consume antibiotics, they can kill good bacteria in our gut. When this happens, problems occur with digestion. This can lead to chronic health issues such as cardiovascular disease. Dr. Houston also teaches that the fat from grain-fed animals creates a more unhealthy type of saturated fat that can be problematic for heart disease. There are different types of saturated fat based on their carbon chain length. In simple terms, the carbon atoms that make up the fat molecules are linked together. This link of carbons can be long or short. So you can have very long chain saturated fat or shorter chain saturated fat. Longer carbon chain saturated fat is found in the meat of animals that are grain fed and living in feedlots with little exposure to sunlight. The healthier, shorter chain saturated fat is found in the meat of animals that are grass fed and living in a more natural environment. Therefore, when eating red meat, be careful to choose meat that has been grass fed and is free from hormones and antibiotics. Now we're going to explore the truth about fish and we'll discover what types of fish you want to avoid at all costs to keep a healthy cardiovascular system. But if you want to learn more about heart health, then why not download our free book, The Surprising Truth About Fat and Cholesterol. And if you'd really like to understand the full picture for fighting and preventing heart disease, check out episode one of The Untold Story of Heart Disease. Both gifts are free and waiting for you now. Just click the link in the description below. Fish is a great source of protein and also contains important nutrients. One vital nutrient it provides is iodine. This is essential for thyroid function. Unfortunately, many people are deficient in this nutrient. This can affect heart rate and lead to weight gain, which can increase risk of cardiovascular disease. Additionally, fatty fish can be hugely beneficial as they provide omega-3 essential fatty acids. These help lower blood pressure, lower heart rate, and improve blood vessel function. At higher doses, they lower triglycerides and may ease inflammation. Both are essential to prevent the development of atherosclerosis. An important thing to understand about omega-3 is that it's a vital part of cell membranes. They affect the function of the receptors in these membranes. Plus, they aid the body to make hormones to regulate blood clotting, as well as contraction and relaxation of artery walls. This is vital as stiff arteries can lead to hypertension and increase the risk of plaque building up, therefore creating a greater risk of coronary heart disease. Eating plenty of healthy omega-3 fatty acids is a vital part of a healthy cardiovascular system. There are many observational studies that show eating fatty fish can help reduce risk of heart attacks. One review looked at 17 studies, including 315,812 participants. It concluded that either low consumption, one serving a week, 
or moderate consumption, two to four servings per week, of fish has a significantly beneficial effect on the prevention of coronary heart disease mortality. Along with omega-3 fatty acids, there's also another essential nutrient we get from eating fish. This is a vital vitamin for a healthy immune system, blood pressure regulation and preventing chronic diseases. Unfortunately, close to 42% of the American population are deficient in it. Can you guess what it is? This is vitamin D, otherwise known as the sunshine vitamin. For many during the winter, or if they live in the northern latitudes, they don't get adequate vitamin D. This is true even in the summer for those who are inside most of the day due to work commitments. Vitamin D regulates more than 200 genes in the body and acts as a hormone. Ensuring you get enough is critical. This is where certain fish can play a critical role in the diet. For example, eating just 4 ounces of salmon provides approximately 100% of the daily required amount. Further good sources of this sunshine vitamin are herrings, sardines, halibut and mackerel. Although the American Heart Association, AHA, says that eating at least two 3.5 ounce servings of fish per week can help prevent cardiovascular disease, there is a catch. Research indicates that so-called heart-healthy fish may not be so healthy for you after all. This is due to the high levels of heavy metals and chemicals that are found in certain types of fish. Some fish may have high levels of methylmercury polychlorinated by phenyls, PCBs, dioxins and other harmful environmental chemicals. These contaminants can negate fish's heart health benefits and increase the risk of cancer. A 2012 review published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that high levels of methylmercury increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, hypertension and heart attacks. A study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health suggests that if you've suffered heart attack or stroke, you should consider getting your levels of mercury checked. Mercury combined to an antioxidant called glutathione. This plays a vital role in regenerating vitamin C and E. Without this regeneration, molecules and lipids can be damaged, which can lead to plaque formation and blockages in the vessels. High levels of mercury can also affect the production of a key molecule for blood pressure regulation, along with disrupting normal clotting of blood. Fish that are high in this heavy metal include tuna, swordfish, shark, king mackerel or tilefish. Further to the problem with mercury, we also have other chemicals found in fish that I already mentioned, polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs for short, and dioxins. PCBs were used in industry until the late 1970s, but are now banned. Unfortunately, they can still be found in water and certain areas are high in this contaminant. Evidence now implicates exposure to PCBs with a higher risk of developing diabetes, hypertension and obesity. These are all risk factors of cardiovascular disease. These pollutants settled into water and sediment and are taken up by small organisms. Over time, they increasingly accumulate in fat and organs such as liver in fish and animals including humans that eat fish. Normally, fish that are bottom feeders, along with larger fish in contaminated waters, have higher levels of PCBs. These are bottom feeders, such as striped bass, bluefish, American eel, sea trout, and predator fish, such as bass, lake trout, and walleye. Another fish that's high in these contaminants is farm salmon. This is due to the fact that they're fed ground-up fish that already have high levels of PCBs. This is a catastrophe for a fish that has the potential to be so supportive for the cardiovascular system. Another pollutant to be aware of when it comes to fish is dioxins. These are a group of hazardous chemicals known as persistent organic pollutants, POPs. POPs have been linked to increased risk of cardiovascular disease and especially ischemic heart disease. In other words, reduced blood supply to the heart. Although fish can be an instrumental part of a heart-healthy diet, sourcing good quality fish is key. Look for fish that are wild caught and from oceans that are not high in pollutants. Also, avoiding the larger fish we mentioned is critical to avoid consuming high levels of mercury. 
As you can see, both red meat and fish can help support your cardiovascular health, but taking the time to source high quality sources of both will ensure you're giving your body the best shot at fighting and preventing heart disease. So there you have the truth about red meat and fish. Let us know in the comments below what protein source you eat for a heart healthy diet. Make sure to stay tuned to Heart Disease Code to discover more wonderful nutrition and wellness insights. And once again, don't leave without grabbing both of your two free gifts. Just click that link below. Thanks for watching. Have a heart healthy day.